Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my Android development tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue talking about fragments, fragment activities, list fragments, adapters, and a whole bunch of other things. If you missed parts 18, 19, and 20, you should definitely watch those before you watch this one because we're creating a pretty big app, and I provide a link in the upper right-hand corner if you want to take a look at those. Well, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, in the previous tutorial, basically what we did was we set up Census App and the Fragment Container, and we moved in Contact Fragment, which was to provide for the capability of adding information in regards to name and address and so forth to each one of our contacts. And this is basically what it looked like whenever we were done. And if you can't see this, view it full screen. This is an HD video. Now what we're going to be doing is making our contact list, which is going to hold all of our contacts and show them all on the screen at the same time. To do that, we're going to need to use an adapter to connect to our all contacts, our array, so that we'll be able to display that information. And we're going to display that through an adapter, like I said before. And whenever we do it, this is basically what it's going to look like. So let's jump over in the code and start making it. Okay, so here we are inside of Eclipse and what I'm going to do is go into the graphical layout and start creating what each of the lists is going to look like what each part for each person that's in the contact list. So basically what I'm going to need to do here is I'm just going to use relative layout because this is for one list item it isn't for all the list items. Basically what I want is two text views. One's going to be a name, the other's going to be a street address. This is all temporary for now. So I'm going to drop that guy inside of there. And then we can jump over here. And let's change this to contact name because that's going to be the contact's name. Something else I'd like to do with this guy is actually put some text inside of here instead of text view, of course. So to do that, we're going to go into strings.xml, and here we are. So I want name to be displayed there just temporarily as sort of like a junk sort of box. And I'm also going to want to put address inside of there and also a new title for this. So we might as well just get the title out of the way first off. I'm going to call this fragment, because this is a fragment, contact, list, title. And we want to keep these in lowercase letters, of course. And I'm just going to put contacts in there for our title for this. And then I'm going to come into this guy right here. And I'm going to call this list item contact name. And I'm just going to put name inside there. Like I said, this is just going to be temporary. It's not going to show up. But I like to have everything in place. Then what I'm going to do is change this from name to street. And then we're going to put street inside of there. And file save strings.xml. Now we can jump back over inside of here. And I still have that text view highlighted. So I'm going to come over here to the text area and click on that. And then I'm going to come down here where it says contact name. Exactly what I just made. And now it's going to show name inside of there. Then underneath the name, I want to get another text view. And that's where we're going to put our street address. And drop that guy inside of there. And then jump over here. And I'm going to call this contact street. And then I can jump in here and hit the text view. And of course it's going to pop up this. I like to keep that going. So I always allow that to occur. Jump back over into text view or the text area. And then we're going to just select street. And there that is. So we got the name and the street. Now we want to have a little checkbox on side of there that's going to be whether we contacted the person or not. And it doesn't have to have anything in it. So I'm just going to grab checkbox and drag it over here. And I don't know where it's going to go. Let's try just throwing it right there. That looks good enough. And for its text, well, first I want to come over here. And yes, I am repeating myself a little bit, but that's okay. I want to make sure you guys understand this stuff. This isn't a video API like you would normally see. I'm literally making apps. Okay, so contact, contacted, checkbox is what that's going to be called. And for the text, I'm just going to have this be nothing. So we don't have any text. Whoops, still there. There we go. Now it's gone. So now we have nothing next to that checkbox. We're going to know that that means we either contacted the person or we didn't. Then we'll jump back into the actual code of this XML file and we'll take a look at exactly what we got here. So contact name, that's fine. Width, height, wrap content. You can see right here where it has layout align parent to the left, true. And then here it has align parent top, true. And that's just positioning it relative to other things. Margin left, I'm just gonna take this out of here. And instead I'm going to say padding for no apparent reason, just, just to do it. There we go. And then I'm going to just put some 4DP padding around everything. There we go. And then the checkbox as well. And let's just put it here. And you can see align bottom to contact street. Everything's relative to other components that are on the screen. Jump back here, make sure it still looks normal. Yeah, it looks good enough to me. So I'll save that and we're done. Now what we need to do is go into contact list activity .java, And a lot of things inside of this are going to be very similar to the census app. 
as they should be because contact list activity is going to take the place of census app in this situation. So basically we're going to copy some stuff out of census app, put it in the contact list activity and reuse it. So I'm going to come over here, open up this, open up the source directory and find census app. And there it is. And there we have a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm just going to select everything, copy that, close this, jump into contact list activity, paste that inside of there. Let's just get rid of these comments. And then I'm going to select everything inside of here and go into source and correct indentation. Yes, I know there's a shortcut, but I don't new shortcuts and tutorials. And then this guy's going to, just like Census App did, it's going to extend fragment activity. If I'll save that, and those errors go away. And like I said before, the fragment manager is going to add the fragments to the activity view. Then on to on create, which is going to be called, and this is created, of course. We have the fragment manager. Everything here is fine. We're just going to let that exactly the way that it was. We're going to check here if it can find fragment container. And you saw previously in the slides that that is where it's going to put our fragment. Check if the fragment is found. And if the fragment wasn't found, then we must create it. And in this situation, we're not going to have contact fragment. We are instead going to have fragment contact list, which you can see right here. See, I replaced contact fragment, which was in the census app with fragment contact list. And we're going to make fragment contact list here in a second. And it's going to give an error because it hasn't been created yet, but that's perfectly fine. And then just like previously, we're going to use the Fragment Manager to put it inside of the Fragment Container, inside of our activity. And that's all we need to do with that guy. So let's file, save it. And now we're going to go and actually create Fragment Contact List. So here we are inside of Fragment Contact List. And what this is going to do, well, first off, we need to extend List Fragment. And what the List Fragment is going to do is it's going to display a list of items in a list view. And by binding to our array list, which we created previously in all contacts, we are then going to use an array adapter inside of this class to pull all the data out and throw it into a list view. So to do so, well, first we got to get the import this guy. And then we're going to come down here and we are going to of course need to have our array list and it is full of contacts and I'm going to call it contact list and get these libraries and then because it didn't show up inside of here I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into source and then I'm going to come down here and go override and implement methods and then inside of this I'm going to scroll down into fragment and go and find on create with the bundle and I'm going to say hey generate that for me and hit OK just do this stuff so much eventually it just sort of spills out of you and that's sort of the goal of this tutorial is to show you things so many times that you can just do it okay now remember we previously wanted to change the title for our current activity that's what we did over here strings.xml fragment contact list title so let's just copy that jump back over into this if you want to change that you just go get activity which is our current activity and set the title and then we're going to go, since we want something out of the strings.xml file, we're going to go string. And then we're going to paste in fragment contact list title. And that's going to throw that title in there just like we wanted. So there's another thing you know how to do now. Then we have to get the array list from all contacts. And to do that, we're going to go contacts list is equal to all contacts. And we're going to say get. And to get it, we have to go get activity. Since this is global, we can do that. And then we can say get contact list. And there we go. Now we have our array list and it's ready to go. Then what we're going to do is create contact adapter. We're actually going to extend the array adapter here in one second. And we're going to call it contact adapter. So it's a customized adapter. New contact adapter. And then we're going to pass inside of it our contact list, our array list. Then after we get that back and it's ready to be put on the screen to provide the data for the list view, we're going to call set list adapter. And that's going to connect the adapter to our list view. And of course we have to pass in the adapter, otherwise it wouldn't do anything. And there we go. Now after this, we're going to create a private class and it's called contact adapter. I'll tell you a bit about adapters here once I get going and it's going to extend array adapter with contacts inside of it and we'll go get those libraries as well and basically what an adapter is going to do is it's going to act as a bridge between an adapter view and the data for that view and the adapter also makes a view for each item in the data set or each list item in 
our list view. So remember whenever we created this guy, list item contact.xml, it's going to create one of these name streets and check boxes for each item it pulls out of our array list. Now our constructor adapter is going to of course get past the array list that is going to be full of contact objects. And I'm going to call this contacts. And then we are going to have to call the parent constructor. And it's going to be passed a context using get activity. And that's going to be used so that it will be able to use the resource being the simple list item. And then we're going to call Android R layout dot simple list item one. Right there. There it is. We'll scroll that up a bit. And this is just going to be a predefined layout that is provided by Android that's going to stand in as a default until we get ours built. And then finally, we pass in contacts, which is our array list, this guy right here. Now what we need to do is to define or create git view. And I'm just going to go in here because I'm lazy and go down here, override implement methods. And then inside of array adapter, we're going to say git view. That's what we want. Click on that and throw it in there. And there's get view. Now get view is going to be called each time it needs to display a new item on the screen because of scrolling, for example. It doesn't pull in all of these list items at once because that would be kind of taxing. So what it does is every single time it needs a new list item in our list view, it calls get view. And the adapter is going to be asked for the new list row and get view is basically just going to provide it. Now, in regards to what these guys are going to do right here, position is going to represent the position in the array from which we will be pulling data. And then you have convert view, which is a pre-created list item that will be reconfigured in the code that we're going to cover below. And then view group, finally, is our list view. So that's what's being passed into get view. And then we want to check if this is a recycled list item. And if not, we are going to inflate it. And to do so, well, we're going to call convert view, which is a list item, and check if it's equal to null. And if it is, we're going to say, well, convert view, call get activity to inflate it, and go get layout inflator. And then we're going to call inflate. And we're going to go and use the list item contact, which is this guy up here. Remember? Let's look at it again. This guy right here, name, street, and checkbox. That's what that's for. And to get that, we just go layout dot and it's list and all the code is available in a description in the for this video of course contact and then pass null inside of it okay after that is set up and we have inflated it we need to find the right data to put in our list item so to do that we go contact and contact is equal to and we need to get the proper item which is provided in position that was passed inside of this so it's going to get the right contact out of our array list and then basically everything else is pretty easy we just have to put the right data in the right boxes so we need a text view and i'm going to call this contact name text view and it's going to be equal to well we have to convert this or cast it to a text view and convert view and to get it we have find view by id and it's named contact name. We just made that. And there you go. Now we have to get this library, of course. And then after that, we go contact name text view and set the proper name. And we get that from the contact that we got. And then we call get name. There we go. We just set the text view. Pretty easy. And then we can get this guy right here and copy it because we got to do the same thing for street. So instead call this street text view. And this is a text view, except this is going to be contact street. And then this is going to be street text view and set text. Well, we're going to go street address. And then that's set. And then we need to set up our checkbox. Checkbox. And I'm going to call it contacted checkbox. And we need to cast it, of course. And then we're going to use this guy again. So there's no use in typing it out. Get it by ID. Paste that in there. And this is his contact contacted checkbox. And there we go. Did we? Yeah, got the right name, even though it was kind of ridiculous. And then get this library. And then to set our checkbox, we can just get this guy right here. Remember, it's a Boolean. So it's either going to be true or false, or checked or unchecked. And set checked to the contact, get contacted. I think that's right. Yep. And then after we're done with that, of course, we need, now that we have the whole entire list item set up properly, we just go and take it and return it. 
And that's it, unless I have an error here, which it looks like I do. Oh, get layout inflator. That's me spelling inflator wrong again. I do that all the time. Don't know why. Okay, save. And we are done with fragment contact list. Now to set it up so that instead of opening up census view, it's instead going to open up contact list activity, this guy right here, what we need to do, or what I'm going to do temporarily, in the future it's going to be changed with a menu system, I'm going to go into the census app manifest, and I'm going to leave the census app inside of here, but I'm actually going to copy this, I'm going to sort of get rid of census app being called by default, and to do that, I'm just going to comment it out because that's easy for me to do. Like I said, we're going to make this cleaner later. Just want to cover as much as possible. And then this guy, we're going to change this. We don't want to open up the census app by default. Whenever the application's opened, we want to open up contact list activity. So that's what we're going to do. And we don't need to change anything else. This is basically going to open that up by default. And there we go. And we are done. So we can file, save it, and execute. And you can see whenever we go to execute it, contact list activity is actually shown there. And that comes because we changed our manifest. And when this guy runs, you can see that Paul Smith, Sally Smith, Mark Smith all show up in a nice list exactly like we wanted. So that is a whole bunch of information. Like I said before, all the code is available in a link in the description for this video. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.